Cambridge Institute workshop courses are the most successful and modern in Britain today. We have more tutors trained to PET BC DIP, BA and MA degree level specifically in dog behaviour and psychology than any other organisation. We are an open learning community, a rich academic and vocational heritage, a creative powerhouse. Good morning everybody, welcome to the Dog on Dog Aggression Workshop. We're here for the next two days. Um, before we make a start on looking at aggression types, just to introduce my colleague here, this is Vicky Laws. She'll be with us for the next two days um, assisting on the course. So if you have any queries or any issues, then please go ahead, feel free to speak to Vicky and I'm sure she'll be able to sort those out for you. Um, what we're gonna start looking at first of all today is types of aggression. So I know in your phase one work, we've already had a look at different types of aggression, causes of aggression. So we're just gonna be doing a little bit more work on that. And then over the weekend, primarily the course will be led by film. So we've got a number of cases, real life clients in consultation with their dogs, describing their aggressive behavior towards other dogs. So that's what we'll be looking at today. Tomorrow morning we'll be looking more at the temperament testing of dogs, what we need to do in a consultation to assess the cause of a dog's behaviour or aggressive behaviour towards other dogs and looking at practical solutions for that. As this is an advanced uh, level five module, we will actually be bringing in a client with an with a aggressive dog for you to work with tomorrow afternoon. Uh, the dog's aggressive towards other dogs and we'll be going through the consultation process from the beginning so we've got our client profile forms that have been sent to us already so we'll have a look through those, how we can learn from those and that can really shorten the time of the consultation because we have so much information regarding the client, the dog and the problems before we even meet them and when the client comes in we'll be conducting a consultation so going through the history of the dog questioning the client so that we can come up with some solutions to discuss as a group later on. Just to add, there is risk when dealing with real dogs, but we will be giving you a safe to talk later on. We have great facilities for our students' care and enjoyment. You'll be taught by and debate with the best canine behaviourists in Britain today. Modern behaviour techniques are taught which are effective. Meeting fellow students is great fun and a large resource for knowledge exchange. We're in the UK's top institutions of dog behaviour and dog training courses as accredited and recommended by the Pet Education Training and Behaviour Council of Great Britain. Good morning everybody, welcome back to Day two of Dog on Dog Aggression, CFBA 5002. I hope you all had a nice evening and the food was nice. Um, just before we start with today's cases, we've got a case this morning involving two dogs displaying aggression to other dogs, so we'll be watching that film shortly. And this afternoon we've got a client coming in with a Mastiff dog that displays aggression towards other dogs. So what we're going to be doing this afternoon is looking through client profile forms and going through a consultation process in two groups, talking to the client to find out more information about the dog and the problem. And then we'll be going outside, looking at the dog's behavior and testing that dog with a number of other dogs that we have available to do that with. And after that's completed, we're gonna be coming back in here, working with our groups and coming up with deliverable, practical solutions that we can impart to the client to start reforming the dog's views of other dogs. She was really good with all dogs. I've seen her playing with a Yorkshire Terrier, seven month old Yorkshire Terrier, um, with no trouble at all. But I do think there is something to to be said for her not being let off the lead now. I was going to ask most of the questions. We've sort of collated what we want to ask. These guys are going to interject if they, they see anything else they want to ask about. Is that okay? Yeah. You do? Um, 
One of the things from the behaviour report that it said was that she aggressively chases domestic animals. I just wanted to give us some more detail. We've got a, a neighbour. Uh, we live in a terraced cottage, um, but the house above us is on a hill, quite a hill, I have to say, and the house above us is quite a way above us. And um, this is the next door neighbour's house, sorry, and they've got cats. And um, there has been... Um, more than one incident of Tia chasing the cat. And one day she caught the cat, and um, no harm to the cat, except that it went and hid for 48 hours, and mm -hmm. nobody could find it. Um, and one day the cat got into our house, and there was a bit of um, a, a debacle, even including the cactus collection that I've got. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. Um, an aggression to family dogs, is that this dog that's here now? No, this, oh. is, no, this is Taz, and Taz is, Taz is kind of our top dog, belongs to my daughter, who lives with us. Um, but we did get another dog from the same rescue we got Tia from, and um, about a year after we got Tia, I think. Um, but it, it attacked Taz, within 20 minutes of being in the house. And then there was another attack on Tia in the kitchen um, that evening. I spoke to So that's what you were discussing earlier, wasn't it, Gaynor, about using a double lead? Okay, what do you want me to do, Heather? Repeat what I did. Keep a little more distance and just walk off when you walk this way. If you can just about to come around. It's nice to be with like-minded people. I've um, actually felt I've grown a lot, learned a lot from the weekend. Also, my opinion is much different from other people's opinions, but to actually be able to like get other ideas and inputs to then filter through to the work. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's always free exchange of, of information. And it's, you learn a lot. The, the free sharing of ideas from all the people there on, on all the cases. That you know, you, There's people from all walks of life and all walks of training that have expertise in different directions. And you pick up something off everybody. Again, I can enjoy it. Um, it's always nice to have lots of people. It's, it's difficult sometimes when you're in a group um, to get your own your own desires, your own wants in there when you used to doing behavioural consultations yourself. But on the flip side of that, seeing how other people want to arrange it and see what they get out of it, that opens doors, opens your mind and, and gives you new ideas. Um, the Mastiff Cross, uh, the owners did say that uh, it was aggressive to small dogs and in fact it was aggressive to all dogs. Uh, in actual fact, if anything, I found the larger dogs uh, were more of a trigger. Um, I found um, obviously proximity, eye contact, uh, were were primary were primary triggers, and I was quite interested to see that the 
the dogs that went past quicker were actually less of a threat than the dogs that, that lingered and went slower, which obviously rules out predatory and uh, kind of chase, chasing kind of. My name's Helen Atten and I've come from Monmouth in South Wales. Yes, I, I hadn't any idea what to expect because I'd booked the course some time ago and uh, essentially turned up, but it, it was great. I mean, it was, it, was, it was a useful addition as well to the course in that we had the opportunity to talk about various aspects of what we do and get to know people. And although we learned what people do yeah, on the course, you learn a lot more about people in a, a less formal environment. Um, what I got from the Collie case was an example of somebody who was in a position that she didn't want to be in with a dog that she didn't want to have. When, but it's an interesting lesson to learn because the immediate question is why is she calling in a behaviourist? Because she clearly didn't want to keep the dog. And that, that was the most interesting aspect of it, trying to work out what it was she expected from the consultation and therefore what was the best way to go about answering her problems. Because in order to offer her a behavioural rehabilitation programme, uh, she would have to do a lot of work and she clearly wasn't prepared to do it. I think she had some very fixed ideas about how she felt dogs should and would behave. The dog she had didn't behave the way she expected the dog to behave uh, and therefore she wasn't happy with it. She had a limited knowledge about dogs from her youth. I seem to remember she said that she'd lived in Surbiton with her parents and dogs, all, people with dogs always crossed the road to keep away from other dogs because there might be a problem and that was her assumption about the way they they were, yes, dogs. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. What did she say? He's not a field dog. She's not a field dog because she has sheep. That was why she believed her brother had foisted this dog on her because she wanted a security dog, but he felt that because she had sheep that would, that would be a good dog to have because it was a collie. And yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't the reason she needed the dog and it wasn't, it wasn't a guard dog either. I thought, it was, I thought it was very valuable. I mean, I do a certain amount of that myself, but it was really nice to, obviously, to witness um, other people being involved in the same uh, activity because different people take different approaches and it's, it's always useful to see how other people... Um, this has been a brilliant weekend. I've met some really interesting um, friends, new friends. I've met some old friends that I knew before, and we've all had a brilliant time. Everyone, the group has been um, really great together, really got on really well. Um, lots of different points of view. I've learned loads more, um, and everyone's really interacted well and had lots of different thoughts about not only the different dogs that we've seen, the different behaviours we've covered, but also about different equipment and how they use them in their walk of life. Um, and I never knew much about protection dogs before, so I've met a lady who teaches protection dogs and that's been quite interesting, talking about that. Um, and some of the, the things that she's seen and done in her
陌生。